Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering what happens when you have too much absorption. So I've mentioned this in other videos, but I don't think I've ever talked about it as directly or specifically. It's not uncommon for home theaters, especially ones that were not properly engineered. Um, and I'm not picking on people who have done this to their own rooms because I think we, part of how I know this is I've done this to rooms and then heard it and said, oops, back off, gotta go the other way. So. I'll start with the problem, then I'll explain a little bit of how you sometimes end up there. When you have too much absorption in a room, it can actually make the room sound bad, not good. And there's a number of reasons why it makes it sound bad rather than better. Um, but how you get there is a whole nother story. So let's start with what, what happens. When you lower the RT60 down too much and there aren't a lot of reflections, one of the first things that starts to happen is that comb filtering goes from inaudible to audible. Why? Well, if you look at the research on comb filtering, what was found ultimately was that in a typical room, comb filtering isn't all that audible because the reflections filled in all those peaks and dips. And so what we heard wasn't as ugly looking as what we measured. However, when you add a lot of absorption into a room and the room becomes semi-anechoic, that isn't true anymore. And the room starts to sound, uh, the, well, all those peaks and dips become audible, basically. The comb filtering becomes audible. And that's a problem. So, um, so that's one of the issues. One of the other issues is that the speakers themselves become much more directional, basically, because the apparent source width has been dramatically reduced since there aren't all those reflections to give them big, wide, spacious sound. That makes the speakers much more localizable. Now, to a point, some people like that, but what happens when you do that all around the room in a surround system is that you can hear the placement of objects around you not as this big, spacious, enveloping sound field, but actually as a set of discrete speakers in different locations around you. So I hear people sometimes say like, what does it take to get a really good enveloping like sound system where you don't hear the speakers? And the answer partly is getting the acoustics right. Because if you overabsorb, you're gonna localize the speakers. And if you underabsorb, you're not gonna localize the speakers. It will be very spacious, but you're gonna lack that specificity in the image locations that you maybe need for good sound. So there's a kind of in-between that's needed as well as proper placement of absorption. Um, so in other videos, I've also talked about adding in some diffusion to offset over absorption, which gets us to how we get there. The most common reason that people get to too much absorption actually happens for one of two reasons. One, they figured that if a little is good, a lot must be better. I think that's not uncommon. And so you buy some, you try it. It's like, wow, that made a difference. You buy some more, oh, that sounds a lot better. And then you just keep buying more until the whole room is totally filled with absorption and it's dead. You know, I've seen RT60 times that were below 0.2 seconds, which is way, way too low. That really isn't gonna be better. I mean, you're gonna have no reflections in the room, but you're also gonna have basically very, very distinct placement of your speakers. All the sound is gonna sound like it's coming directly from those speakers and the pans are gonna be kind of, I don't ping pong is the wrong word, like rubber bandy. It's gonna kind of like hear it from the speaker, maybe midpoint between the speaker, and then it's gonna jump to the next speaker. And you're not really gonna get a nice smooth pan between them. As I said, the comb filtering becomes much more audible. That's a problem. And so I think that that's one reason why it happens. I think the other reason why it happens, which is how I've run into this before, is that you have a room that has various acoustic artifacts and you pick the wrong tool for the problem you're hearing. So you have some audible uh, slap echo, for instance, is a common one. Adding some absorption around the room and getting the RT60 to where it needs to be sometimes doesn't get rid of any of the slap echo because the slap echo wasn't being caused by the walls where the absorbers went. And so you just add more absorption thinking that that's gonna eventually get it. Like maybe the room just isn't as dead as it's measuring. Reality was it was as dead as it was measuring, but the slap echo is caused by very specific locations. Now, if you could figure out exactly where those were, you could potentially put absorbers there, but the better way to do it, cause that's still gonna lower the RT60 too much is actually to add diffusers there. And they make special, cause they don't need to be very big. So they make special diffusers just for that purpose. Or realistically, you could put some odd trim shapes up there. You could, I, you know, people sometimes put pictures around a room that add some extra diffusion that breaks up some slap echo as long as it's the right size and location. Point being though, sometimes people are trying to, it's like chasing your tail. You're trying to fix a problem with the wrong solution. You just keep doing more and more and more of it. And uh, you know, the good money after bad situation, you're just not getting anywhere. 
you're just spending a lot of resources on something that isn't fixing it until actually you've created a new problem, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So, um, so that's essentially why, that, that is why you can have too much absorption. I think that's how you get to too much absorption. Certainly that's how I've ended up there. And I would say when you're in that situation, just try to reevaluate what it is you're trying to engineer out of the room and then focus on the right tool to do that. Absorption is often not the right tool. So I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.